Good morning, guys. Or should I say afternoon? It's about quarter to 12. And I'm leaving the cave right now. And it's a little treacherous out. We had an ice storm last night. And even though it's warming up, like it's literally almost 40 degrees right now, uh, which is spring weather, <laughs> um, there's still a coating of ice and snow. Uh, so I was kind of waiting to leave for it to melt, but I'm going to go for it. Go ahead, you go. <laughs> um, Tom was going to follow me back, but I think I'll be all right. And if I can't get out of my driveway, then I'll get back in the car and come back over here. But I got to give it a shot. I was going to go to the post office this morning, but it's a little too hazardous for me to to do that. So Connie, I will try to get your package tomorrow, honey. I know you've been waiting on me for to get that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little cough cough here. And how are you guys? I hope everybody's doing well. Like I said, I'm getting a bit of a late start, but that's what happens sometimes. I was up since seven, but it's like waiting for paint to dry, waiting for snow to melt, you know? So, again, I have no special agenda for the day. Um, we have some lunch ideas and have a couple things to show you. Some projects I've been working on. Gypsy and the Witch is coming up. You know, I love to work right under the wire. So that's, I don't know what today's date is, the 11th or something. Big full moon tomorrow. And life is good, so let me concentrate on my drive in here, and I'll see you back at the house so I can be a little scenery. Here's my road, you guys, and my driveway is looking kind of hazardous, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Okay, guys, you're looking at my porch, and I made it. I used my crutches like ski poles, and I was able to pull myself along, but it was hazardous going there, but I'm safe and sound, okay? So let me feed Boy, let me tell you, it's days like this that my birdie friends really appreciate uh, the extra seed. Um, I feed them all year round, including the squirrels, um, and mostly just give them um, black oil sunflower seed, although I do give, you know, raisins and nuts and treats and suet and things like that but this is primarily what I give them and with a coating of ice all over everything today um, they're really thankful for it so what do you guys feed your birdie Okay, finished feeding the birdies and I just made a pot of coffee and I'm already getting very hungry. I'll show you a sneak peek of what I'm working on for the Gypsy and the Witch. What? That purple toolbox I use to keep my uh, polymer clay supplies in. So that's a hint. Um, I got that at the auction last year and painted it purple, of course. So it's, you know, a good quality toolbox for anyone who knows these things. But yeah, that's where I keep all my polymer clay in. And I'm excited about this month's theme and project. Like I said, that'll be released on midnight on the 15th. Um, what are we going to eat for lunch today, you guys? <clears throat> what is it going to be? And I apologize that I keep clearing my throat. Um, this little mini cold has been hanging on all week long. Let's say good morning or good afternoon to the window. It's already becoming rainbow hour up here. As you can see on my ceiling, I start to creep around. <clears throat> ah, la 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 la. Have a little, uh, you guys have seen me do this before. Bottom of a celery and a little scallion. I put that in some marbles in the water there. 
We'll put those in some dirt. Is it me or is anyone else dying to get their hands on some seed catalogs and have already started thinking spring and planting? Uh, yeah. So, da 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 da. What do we got? Oh, I told you I recycle my bags, right? Hello, Ellie. Hello, Craven. Behind my little, I just keep a string here, obviously, with some clothespins, and it is a multitude of uses. I want to do some dehydrating today, too. Um, I have some grapes that I want to dehydrate for the world's best raisins. I have some parsley and some mushrooms and maybe some apples, but maybe we'll do that later. What am I doing now? Having coffee. Yes, coffee. Did you see my cool mug from the Funky Hippie Chic Boutique? Giving a shout out to my sister Sunshine. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have some coffee, you guys, and pour it on the... Did you see that? You caught that? I'm not editing. Yep, I'm going to pour it on the counter, and um, I'll see you guys in a little bit when I figure out what we're making for lunch. Okay, guys, today's card is the King of Wands, and according to my tarot book, um, this could represent a dark-haired man, someone who's friendly, honesty, news coming concerning an unexpected good event in the near future, someone who's loyal and noble, passion, a good marriage, unexpected heritage, power, strength, courage, leadership, and ambition, someone who's proud and confident, enthusiastic, kind, a proud father. Someone with excellent leadership qualities, a country gentleman, dynamism, mediator, arbitrator. So I can look out for this guy or someone with these qualities or these qualities coming into my life. Any of those things. Um, court cards to me usually do represent uh, people. So we shall see. And I'm still listening to motivational videos. If you guys haven't checked this guy out yet. You should. He's amazing. And so are you. Okay, guys, I'm starving. Um, I had a hard decision. Actually, Tom and I went shopping, and, you know, sometimes you have too much to choose from. I originally thought that I wanted to make some sausage and peppers and have it. I have this whole wheat Kaiser roll here that it's really been calling my name. But I also got, I haven't tried this yet, this is slow roasted chicken, sesame garlic, um, the Tofurky brand, and it, I saw these on the noodles and I thought, oh, that looks really good. So you know what? I'm going with this, and there's a recipe on the back. This miso sesame soba noodle bowl. I don't have any soba noodles, but I do have some ramen so we're just going to use the noodles from the ramen and not the flavor packet although this one is vegan it's loaded with sodium as I know you guys know so I'm going to use the noodles from that and then we're going to add some chopped up um, this is a seedless cucumber a little bit of fresh pepper the recipe actually called for red I have green um, a green onion and we're going to make a sauce out of miso and rice vinegar and some toasted sesame oil. Doesn't that sound good? So let me put a pot of water on to boil at, for the noodles. And these, it says you can cook this in the microwave or in a skillet. We're going to do it in a skillet. So let me heat up my cast iron and I'll see you in a minute. I'm not even going to break it up. I 
and we'll let that go. Here's that seasoning packet. Um, for like three minutes. And then I'm going to drain it. make our chicken. I have the skillet heating up and I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil just to coat the bottom. I don't know how sticky this stuff is going to be. If you don't want to use oil, don't use oil. Okay, so uh, I have no idea you guys. My first time trying this see how it goes. I've had good luck with fake chicken products um, from Gardein and other brands, so I'm hopeful. Um, this is what it looks like. Looks like chicken to me. And this only has to cook for, you know, like a few minutes. I want to be sure. Yeah, so it's two minutes. That's it. So I'm going to cook this up and assemble our sauce. I'm looking forward to this. Smells good. Okay. See you in two minutes. Okay. Looks pretty good to me, you guys. I can't wait to try it. I'm going to put a lid on this to keep it warm while we make our sauce. And see you in a second. Okay, I'm not going to do anything fancy to these veggies. I'm just going to probably use half of this green pepper here. And... Just clean out the seeds. I've already washed these good. Okay. Again, I'm not doing anything fancy. Yum. I will eat my scraps, though. Um, yeah, I'm just going to cut some slices here. Maybe make them a little bit smaller. How's that? Cut that off so I can eat it. Okay, and I told you we have a green onion. The recipe calls for three of these. I only have one. And I will be saving the bulb to plant. You can also throw these in your stock pot. They always tell you to cut with your knuckles down like this, but I have a hard time with that. It doesn't feel right to me. So I try to be careful. And then our little cucumber, the skin is so thin that I'm going to leave it on. Again, I washed it really good, but you could peel if you want. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to chop off the ends. And the recipe calls for matchstick slices, but I'm just going to do little circles. what you want. Oh, I hope you can see me this whole time. And then we'll whip up our sauce. Yeah, I've never made this recipe before, but I'm excited. 
and hungry, which always makes it more exciting. Okay, so there's our garnish, if you will. Let me get our sauce stuff together. Be right back. Okay, so the recipe calls for two tablespoons of white miso, which is about exactly what I have left here, almost out, and two tablespoons of rice vinegar, and one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. And I also have some sesame seeds that I'm going to use as garnish. So, crash. I'm just going to literally not even measure this. I'm just going to dump what's left in here uh, and put this on the shopping list. And then I'm going to... The only thing I see missing from this recipe, and I haven't even tasted it yet, but if I were making this up out of my head, I would probably add some type of spice to this. But we're going to go with just how it says for now. One tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. Okay. And I have my little baby whisk. And we're just going to whisk it up. And then we're going to add all of our other ingredients. Yeah, I bet you this would be really good with some kind of hot chili paste. Or even, um, I have some red chili paste, uh, gochujang, the Korean paste. But I'm going to use this just how it is for now. That miso doesn't want to break up. You could probably add a little water to this too, just to thin it out a little. But maybe the uh, heat from the fake chicken and the noodles. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm going to add everything else. Oh, it smells good. Can't go wrong, right? Let's add our noodles which have been sitting here waiting. And I'm going to get a fork. Yeah. That looks good just by itself. Okay, and then next we'll add in our chicken, which I have resisted trying, you guys, although I was very tempted. Doesn't that look great? Nothing was harmed in the making of this product. Oh, wow. Yum. Once again, I feel guilty for not having lunch with Tom when I make some of these yummies. I have to save them some. That's a good way to test it out. See if it's any good, right? Okay. So there's that, which of course there's way too much food here. And then we have all of our greens. Yummy. And that's a nice texture breakup, you know. We have the mush of the noodles and the... Ah, oh, you guys. What do you think? I'm glad, woo, escapees. I'm glad uh, that we decided to do this one. I could do sausage and peppers next week or something. And I'm going to add a little sesame seed. I didn't toast these, but that's okay. Protein, protein, protein. Mommy Tang, we miss you. All right, you guys, I'll see you back here in one second, and we'll have a bite. Well, hello there. This smells amazing, you guys. Really, really smell the sesame oil. And I can't wait to try it, so yay. Mmm. 
Wow. Mm. There is a lot going on here, you guys. First of all, the main thing I taste is the sauce running through it. And it's like the perfect blend of the sesame with the tartness of the rice vinegar. So I love that. Secondly, this chicken, chicken, is freaking amazing. It tastes just like chicken. Let me see if I can find the box for you guys again. So you can check it out. Water, vital wheat, gluten, organic, tofu, non-GMO, all vegan flavors, sea salt, you know, made out of good stuff. And I remember back in the day, years ago, um, Tofurky, the brand, had a bad rap. I, you know, everybody initially was like, oh my God, this stuff. These companies have really, really come a long way. And I highly, highly uh, recommend this. We support many causes to raise awareness for people, animals, and our planet. Well, two thumbs up for this, you guys. And I'm trying to think how much this cost. It was probably three or four dollars. And this is totally, this is way too much for me, you guys. This bowl is huge. This would easily feed to adults lunch. So I think it's worth it. I'm going to have one more bite with you guys. And then I'm going to show you, we'll do show and tell. How about that? I have a tiny bit of Happy Mail that I had picked up during the week from our dear friend Inez, mother of Ellie and Craven. And I also have some stuff I got from Amazon and um, some books that my sister Sue got me. There you go. Really good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention the cucumber and the pepper. Adds a really nice crunch to this. Otherwise, I could see it being really kind of heavy. Um, highly recommend this, you guys. Give it a whirl. Let me know. This could be modified in many ways. I could easily put some hot chili in this. Um... And will next time. Mm. See you in a few minutes. I wanted to give you a little exercise ball update. I love this thing. And I've been on it every day. And the one at Tom's too. Which I love a little more than he does. <laughs> uh, my grandson loves it. It's amazing. It's totally cool. I love to sit on it. Um, it's got good bounce and good give and I keep it here in my bedroom so I don't run over it in my wheelchair but yeah highly highly recommend one of these if you guys um, just want to get a little more movement in your life it's great core strengthening and you can actually use them to exercise on so um, it's definitely a hit totally glad I got it Okay, so lunch was amazing. And you know what I forgot to share with you guys? I'm just trying this out for the first time. Oh, sorry for the glare. Zevia. Um, I first saw this on Divine Munchies channel. There's a girl named Star who does mukbang videos, and she's vegan. And no sugar, no artificial sweeteners. It's caffeine-free, non-GMO. This is cream soda. This is the only one that I could find at um, my local Walmart. It's carbonated water, natural flavors, stevia leaf extract, and citric acid. Zero calories. And I used to be, back in the day, 
a Pepsi addict. Um, I could easily drink one or two two liter bottles of Pepsi a day and did for years in addition to smoking cigarettes constantly. Um, that was my diet for a lot of, a lot of years. Um, and then I switched to diet Pepsi, which is even worse. So, um, since I've transitioned to a vegan diet, even though, you know, there's seltzer waters and things like that, they don't really do it for me. And I do like a, um, a soda now and again. So the fact that this is a healthy soda, as, as it were, uh, makes me excited and it's delicious and cheers. I like it a lot. So again, um, not really budget friendly though. I think it was like $4.99 for a six pack. So I'm too cheap to do that all the time, but for a treat, definitely, definitely give it a thumbs up. <clears throat> I also wanted to tell you guys, I told you, speaking of cigarettes, I should do a whole video on it, but it'll, it will be nine years in February, February 16th, uh, that I've quit smoking cigarettes and I smoked cigarettes constantly for over 35 years since I was about 12 years old. Uh, and anyway, I was finally able to quit. Uh, it will be in nine years. Can't even believe that. Um, and after I quit for a few years, I chewed Nicorette gum, um, for a few years, not a few months. I did it for three or four years. And then from Nicorette, I transitioned to, uh, what I'm currently chewing now, which is dentine ice, which is awful. It's loaded with aspartame and I know it's bad, and uh, so anyway, I've talked to you guys. The same way that I was able to quit smoking, I'm handling my gum addiction, and that's by keeping myself accountable, and I have a little piece of paper, and I just keep it in my gum container, and I write down every time I have a piece, and I don't allow myself to have it more frequently than once, a, once an hour, which is very easy to do. Um, this forces you to be conscious of it. Same thing with smoking. I wrapped it around my pack of cigarettes and I would write down um, when I have them. So it forces you to become aware of what you're doing. And you can then make that choice to not do that. Um, and so after writing it down for a week or so, then I'll slowly, although it's been over a week now, actually, I should do this now because um, I started this January 1st. Uh, is to space out the time in between doses, you know, but it's a big thing for me. And honestly, I was born with a blister on my thumb from sucking my thumb in utero. So this goes back before I was even born. And uh, it's taken me 52 years to tackle all of my bad habits. And uh, this is the last of it. But I'm happy to, and I hate the fact that I'm constantly chomping on gum and that, you know, like I said, it's loaded with, with, uh, chemicals and everything. So saying goodbye to that, doing good with that. How are you guys doing? You know, I told you I don't make any resolutions. I've made, you know, set my intentions and things like that, but you know, I know I get caught up in the fresh new year, just like everyone else. And I'm wondering, uh, this is about the time when people start to lose steam, you know? two or three weeks in, um, they don't even make it past January. So I'm wondering how you guys are doing. If you've set any, uh, good intentions for yourselves, um, you know, what do you do to stay on track and, and keep motivated? You know, um, telling my things to you guys helps to hold me accountable too. So that's cool. Um, of course I have a list. I feel like I don't get to see you guys, you know, once a week, I, there's just too much to tell you. So I, again, I have to write it down, but um, I did have lunch with my birth sister, Sue, last week, uh, and that was great, and um, she's one of the strongest women I know, and I'm blessed to, she's five years older than me, and uh, I'm blessed to have her in my life, and it's just her and I. Now that my mom's gone, we're it, so uh, I treasure that, and she gifted me, um, I'm a little, she knew that I had uh, been aware of this. Let me just show you. Okay. Um, a while back, I think in December, I posted a meme um, from 
one of these, and I had no idea who Don Miguel Ruiz was. And I know I'm late now getting on the bandwagon um, with this um, Four Agreements book, and now here's the Fifth Agreement. But I am so thrilled. My sister saw that I posted that on my Facebook page, and she said, oh, I love that book. And I was like, what book? So that's how I found out, and a few other people talked about it. And so she said that maybe Santa would uh, get me it for Christmas, and Santa did, in fact, get me these for Christmas. So thank you, Sue, and I love you, and it was great catching up. And, uh, yeah, treasure, treasure your siblings if you have them. And we were typical. I'm sure I was a pain in the neck. I know I was a pain in the neck, younger sister, and she always had to babysit. And growing up, you know, we had our bickering and scrabbling and stuff like that, but... She, as we be, she became a young mother and I became a young mother and you enter whole new stages of your life, you know, I really treasure my sister. And like I said, she's one of the strongest women I that I know. So thank you, Sue. I love you. And she also, because she knows her sister, and she's also very crafty and she sews and she has a website too. Um, actually, you know what? Shout out to my sister, Sue. I'm going to put a link to her page. Um, she does, she sews toddler clothing and she also does like novelty items, trick or treat bags and things like that. But she's a seamstress. So I'll put a link to her channel below. Check her out and tell her she calls me Kelly. Um, some of you didn't know they meant you mentioned in my last one of my last videos. I mentioned that my real birth name is Carol Lee. And some of you do know that. And depending on what part of my life I know you from, you know me from a different name. Uh but I go by Ke Callie's a nickname that was gifted to me probably in 1992 and it stuck. But my birth name is Carol Lee. Um, and when I was born, my sister being five couldn't say that. So she called me Callie and that developed into Kelly. And so she actually uh, and that my nieces and nephews call me Aunt Kelly and um Sometimes my mom did, too, as, like, a term of endearment. I always knew if I was in trouble if it was Carol Lee. Carol Lee! If it was Kel or Kelly. Uh, it was, anyway. Why am I telling you guys this? Just because I feel like it. My sister, that's why. She knows me well. Uh, I'm blessed to have her in my life and uh, love the ones you got. Sometimes, you know, we can't choose our family, but um, they're here for a reason. So, anyway, she got me a bag of charms. And you guys know I love my cogs and gears. And she told me about a website that she got these on. Boy, have I mentioned it's time for a mixed media assemblage collage? It's time for assemblage collage. The website that she got these on is a site called wish.com, W-I-S-H.com. And again, maybe I'm late getting on the bandwagon here. Um, but she turned me on to the site. And I checked it out uh, yesterday, actually, and it's super cheap. And I think uh, a lot of the stuff comes from overseas or whatever, and it probably takes forever to get here, but it's super cheap. And these are good quality charms and things. So I did order a few different charms that should be coming probably in two months, and I'll share with you um, when I get them. But have you guys checked out Wish.com yet? And if you haven't, check them out. Um, so that was that, and what else? I, let me just show you what I got. Oh, uh, Tom had picked up, I told you, he loves incense as much as I do, um, if not more, <laughs> and he's constantly trying new things. I, you guys the, who know me know I'm the Satya Nag Champa girl, as many of my other friends are. Um, and die hard, you know, I've been wearing patchouli oil since I'm 15 years old and still wear it. When I find something I like, I stick with it. But I am open to trying new things. And Tom got this new, um, the company is Ohm Incense Works. Okay, so he got us some Dragon's Blood and some Nag Champa. And I haven't tried the Nag Champa yet. I did try the Dragon's Blood and love it. So, recommend it. And one thing that I thought was hilarious, on the back, you know, they do a caution thing here. And I've never seen this on an incense packet. It says, caution, keep incense out of reach of children and pets. Keep burning incense away from flammable materials. Never leave burning incense unattended 
and make sure ashes fall on a fireproof incense burner or ash container. Do not eat incense. What? Do not eat incense. What do they think? It's like bath salts or something? Um, yeah. And speaking of unattended incense, don't ever do it. And I could turn this into an hour-long video, but really long story short, maybe 20 years ago or so, I had, for those of you who know, I have a big wax drip mountain made from wax candles. I've had them throughout the years. I had one of those in my living room, and I lit an incense stick and put it on the wax mountain and left my house. Came back three hours later to a house full of smoke. I had to call the fire department. I thought there was a fire in the house. The incense had caught the wax mountain on fire, covered one of my guitars with wax. Easily the whole place could have gone up. So luckily I came home when I did. I also had a cockatiel at the time who almost died from smoke inhalation. It was a big deal. So anyway, don't leave your incense unattended because really something bad could happen. Um, I didn't know I was going to tell you that story. Isn't that fascinating? All right, so Tom got me more incense. And then just a few couple random things I got. You guys know, like many of you, I am a huge ball jar fan. At, ball jar fan. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. And um, I love all shapes and sizes. I get them at the auction. I'll buy them secondhand. I've gotten them new. But often, and I love to can too, and maybe we'll do some canning this summer. I'll do some tomatoes or something. But often with wet ingredients, the inside lids get rusty. And those of you who use these know that. And unless you're storing dry goods, of course. But I saw these on Amazon and I said, let me check them out and try them. And the, I'm not a fan of plastic, but these are pl plastic storage caps for ball jar lids. And I like them. They'll never rust. You know, obviously you don't do any canning in these, but just for storage sake, um, I thought they were cool. And this was like an add-on item. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Amazon, know that you can, they sometimes have really super cheap, uh, I, I don't know if it's a prime thing or not. Hmm. Anyway, I got these for like $2.00 with a $25 order or something. So that was cool. And I don't even know how many are in there. Eight. And they're, you know, reusable forever. I also got some of this and I swear I have, I've had a video in mind for, oh, I don't know, over a month now. And I promise you, I will get it to you, but I've been tweaking it, etc. And I wanted to try, and this is super versatile for many, many things. Um, magical or otherwise. So I bought that this for that, and this was probably, I also got this on Amazon, good old Amazon. I was thinking of becoming an Amazon affiliate. Do you guys know anything about that? Where you can just like, you know, if I'm showing you this, I could give you the link. You know what I mean? And I think I get like a cent or two if you guys buy something. Is that something I should think about doing? I don't know. I do an awful lot of Amazon hauls. Um, this was maybe $8 or something, and there's a good amount in here. So 16 ounces. What do you guys use arrowroot powder for? And I was also thinking of making... I'm all over the place. Um, I got that holistic vegan deodorant in my goddess provision box last month um, from Meow Meow Tweet. And I love it. And so it got me down the road of thinking of making more natural products. I told you guys I'm going to be doing my own cleaning products. I purge my bathroom for most of the things. And thank you for the links. Uh, for those of you who left a link to the vegan hair products, um, Carol and Deb, thank you for that. I'll definitely check out some of those. And um, I want to make my own deodorant. <clears throat> so I know that you can also use arrowroot in uh, some certain recipes for that as well. So, uh, yeah, and speaking of cleaning and being holistic, this is an old standby. I just happened to buy a bigger bigger bottle now. Um, I've This is Dr. Bronner's Magical Soap. 
Uh, this is peppermint. There's many different. He's got lavender, almond, um, all different kinds. Uh, there's an amazing documentary. I believe it's on Netflix or Amazon all about Dr. Bronner um, and the company. And if you haven't checked it out, I would recommend it. I first heard about this, uh, believe it or not, on the Woodstock field from some rainbow hippies who turned me on to it. And uh, it's 18 in 1 hemp peppermint pure cast oil soap certified trade grade made with organic oils. And this stuff is amazing. And you should keep it in your bathroom so people can read it while they're in there because it is the most entertaining, interesting read all over the label. It's known for its funky label. Um, you can do everything from wash your hair, brush your teeth, wash your floors, um, make cleaning products, you name it. This stuff does it. Um, it's not harmful to any living thing. You dilute it, and this bottle can last, this would last me six months easily. So I will be incorporating this into some of my natural cleaning uh, product videos and videos, life style things oh and speaking of videos i've had a couple requests recently for um like sharing some of my more um witchy things like i talked about doing a crystal cleansing video and things like that you guys i hope you'll understand and respect i kind of want to keep that side of my life private um obviously i'm proud to be a witch it's not a secret but as far as my actual practices and what i do um i do keep that close to heart and choose to keep that private but i am happy to shout out uh many of my witchy brothers and sisters here especially on youtube who do have amazing how-to videos and things like that i've talked about um recently i talked about ember honey raven lady grave dancer um there's the white witch parlor she's really has a million um i've shout out to my friend dina and Madame Luna and Desert Siren and Crystal Dragonfly. There's like a million, like you could just type in how to whatever, obviously on YouTube. Um, I'm not trying to be evasive or anything like that. It's just something that's very private to me. And um, I know you guys will understand and respect that. But I kind of thought back and forth, oh, I should do this. and not. But each time that I've wanted to go forward, something's been holding me back. So... I'm listening to that something. Um, but yeah, shout out to all my brothers and sisters here who who do put out these amazing uh, tutorial type videos and how to uh, Wicca 101, if you will. So check them out. And um, what else? Is that all I have to haul? I think so. Yeah, and thank you guys for all the support for the Dyson Deal Challenge. Um, we have like, I don't know, 35 group members over there now. And you guys have been putting out your, you know, um, shout out to Danielle and Teresa and Connie who've put out, um, their journal pages for this month and did their own challenges. Teresa actually published a video. It blows my mind. I love, uh, the community here. So thank you guys. I just, I get all warm and fuzzy inside. It's amazing. Um, and I love you. So I'm going to stop rambling because, again, this is probably a hour-long video. And I'm going to get into uh, this happy mail. And I am going to thank you in advance. I did talk to you on Facebook uh, earlier, sweet Inez. Um, Inez has made beautiful bracelets for me. Actually, the bracelet I was wearing in the Goddess Provision Box yesterday was made by her. She made me a beautiful Native American bracelet of wrap. I mean, just blessings the at the ellie doll my craven crow raven um so much um i gush about you guys all the time it's not necessary to send me things but when you do i'm just so honored to have a piece of you here so um and i, I i'll do my best to reciprocate i told you um i'm not i'm not gonna make excuses but you know i do live on a fixed income i don't have uh monetary means right now to uh, reciprocate uh, and bless you guys the way that you bless me, but I will always send you back uh, at least a piece of my artwork and a thank you note and just want you to know how much I really, truly do appreciate you. And when I win the lotto, uh, I'll be sharing. So 
I haven't opened this. I did slit it, and here we go. So thank you. Um, and she sent me a beautiful... <laughs> she said, P.S., I don't mind if you video. Well, that's great, and I, I knew that already because uh, we touched base earlier on Facebook. But again, yeah, thank you, guys. If you ever don't want me to share, uh, let me know. And let me know if you like me sharing. Uh, maybe you... I hope it doesn't, I don't ever come across as like I'm bragging or something. I, I want you to know how humbled and blessed and blown away I am. Um, be quiet, Callie, and open the happy mail. Look at this box. Are you kidding? Hologram, hologram. Gem and the hologram. <gasps> oh. Wow. You know, I'm tearing up. I feel it. Are you kidding me? I wish Inez does not make videos at this time. But she does have a YouTube channel. And I will link it below. And I just can't even believe this. This here is yet another amazing bracelet. Look at this. Ah, uh, uh, Thank you, sister. Ah. Uh, Wow. Oh, it feels good, too. Oh. Thank you so much. This is so, so beautiful. You guys, ah, oh, put me to shame. I am just blown away at your talent. Look at this. Ah, oh, she does these all by hand. Look at this gorgeous tassel necklace. Wow. I love it. I love, love, love it. This, I've been, you guys know I go through spurts of what I'm wearing. This came, was from my youngest daughter for Christmas. It's amethyst beads. I, oh my God. I, Inez. Thank you, sister, so much. This is so beautiful. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. You guys rock so much. Ah, I hope you feel the love the way I'm feeling the love from you guys. And yeah, I have a great week. I have, I got to get my butt to gear in gear now and really uh, finish up start I haven't even started filming the gypsy and the witch project um and I have other stuff you know I, I debate I go back and forth I'm like I want to film more than once a week and just face to face with you guys but uh, I have I have so many ideas so so much going on so little time but back to this ah oh, I love you guys and Connie never fear I will go to the post office I just didn't want to break my butt this morning uh don't worry. Um, I know sometimes you guys send me mail from afar, and if it doesn't get here right away, you start to worry. But never fear, and I'll always shoot you a message when I um, when I receive it. I, I re get mail at home at my house, and I also have a P.O. box, so they're not at the same place. So, And like I said, I live in a one-horse town, so sometimes things get a little delayed, and there's always the new guy, right? I hope you're all doing well. I love you all so much. You're so, so good for my spirit, my heart. Um, I'm wishing you peace and love. Give me a thumbs up if you are so inclined. If you have not yet subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. Um, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you really soon, and I'll see you even sooner. I am going to do a Mission Inspiration um, this week, too. So, Gypsy and the Witch, Mission Inspiration, Assemblage Collage, Assemblage Collage. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.